What does the expression son of God mean exactly? What do we understand by that? Has God fathered a child? Astaghfirullah. Too great is Allah elevated, Allah Ta'ala. He is above all such things. And indeed, he has taken to himself no consort, no spouse, no wife. It is almost blasphemous to even think in those terms. And the Quran is right in saying such a thing. And we do agree with it fully. Those of us who are followers of Isa al-Masih have no qualms with this, no quarrel at all with that statement. Makhtalafda. We are not in disagreement, quite the opposite. For the testimony of the previous scriptures is that indeed Allah does not beget a child like a man begets a child with a woman. That is not what the scriptures teach. The concept of son first appears in the testimony of Nabi Dawood. In the very second chapter of the Psalms of the Zabur, we are told of a special designation which is given to the person whom Allah has chosen to represent him to be a king over Israel and in some sense establishes him as his caliph. And in speaking about that person, particularly in verse 7, he says, today, today, I have made you my son. For in the culture of that day, when a great king is speaking and relating to one of his subservient kings, one of his representatives ruling a part of his kingdom, he would speak of that individual not only as his servant and even would allow him the word Lord, but oftentimes the relationship of the great king to that other king is described as a relationship of father to son, of son to father. And what comes out in this psalm is three concepts put in one. He is Masih, he's anointed, I have anointed you as king. You are king, does, you know, you're my representative, you're the caliph, and furthermore, you are called son. You have a special relationship. All three put in one. Messiah, King, Son. In the Quran, for example, in Surat Al Mu'minin, in Ayah 91, we are clearly exhorted to understand that no, Allah did not beget any son. No son did Allah beget. And then it goes on to explain why in other passages, for example, it tells us is because who is it that has given him a consort, a spouse? There are two words for son in Arabic. One is ibn and the other is walad. Ibn is the brother term which often can have a figurative, non-biological meaning. The Quran itself uses this term figuratively in Surah Baqarah and Ayah 215, where travelers are called Ibn as sabili or sons of the road. So this term, Ibn, is the correct Arabic translation of the concept of son used of Jesus in the Bible. Whereas Walad denotes a son born of sexual relations, rather like the English term offspring. This is the term of relationship Walad, which the Quran forbids. For unlike Ibn, Walad means biological offspring. And when we actually analyze the verses, it becomes clear that the concept of son, which the Quran is denying, is not what the Injil teaches, but rather some blasphemous notion that Allah took a wife and produced a physical son, astaghfirullah. And so there is no disagreement between the Injil and the Quran on this. It is one and the same that it is speaking of here, not physicality, for that is forbidden, but speaking of a special relationship.